Hello and welcome. Good evening to another evening here at Rust Linz. My name is Rainer Stropik and I am very happy to see you here at our today's virtual meetup. And with that, I think it's time to bring our first speaker of the evening on the stage. Hi, Christian. Hello, how are you? The stage okay. is visible and with that, the stage is yours. Thank you for being with us, Christian. Absolutely, thank you. Okay, so let's talk about what Valid is. Um, Valid, uh, we have a repository. If you go to GitLab, we're in GitLab, not GitHub. Uh, you go to GitLab slash Valid, you can see our group there. And there's a project here called Valid. And we have another thing called Valid Chat as our first big demo application um, and some other little forks of projects. But uh, the Valid repository here has a, a couple crates that we publish. Um, and you can see Valid Tools and Valid Core. The, the bulk of the Valid system is in this Valid Core crate. Um, Right now, we're actually having some trouble building the documentation, but uh, I think the next build will actually succeed on docs.rs. It'll make it a lot easier for people to understand what's going on, but uh, I will uh, give you a little tour of what Valid is. Um, open this up here. Okay, so effectively, Valid applications are, uh, Valid is intended to be embedded as a overlay network. Uh, on top of the standard internet protocols that you use. So it does not provide a, a networking stack like TCP or UDP. It expects that you're using internet protocols, um, but provides a communication layer that connects all of the different valid hosting uh, nodes together across the internet. So if you have a mobile application, and you link in valid core into it, it becomes a node in the network. If you build a desktop application or a server, a Linux um, uh, system D application or anything like that, they all run the same valid core. So the same crate is embedded in all of the different platforms, including WebAssembly. Valid can run on Windows, Mac, and Linux, and it can run inside browsers, um, and it can run on iOS, and it can run on Android. And we actually, um, test on all of those platforms and they all work today. So uh, if you have a great idea for a peer-to-peer -peer chat program or a social network, we really want to do a social network someday, um, or a video game that you want to write, um, these are uh, you know, great uh, target um, projects to use Valid. Um, we have a Discord for anyone that wants to sort of talk with other Valid programmers um, or the core team. Um, and if you go to valid.com, uh, that's our little website here, valid.com, you can see here, take back control. And we're talking about how it's an open source. It is fully open source. It is a uh, Mozilla public license uh, framework. So you can use it in both fully open source programs and free software, as well as commercial software if you choose to. Um, but we definitely recommend people uh, go as, as free as you can. Um, we we're building this built on the idea that everything um, should be able to be built without needing to be monetized. Um, so uh, unlike a lot of other peer-to-peer -peer projects that you may see out there these days, um, like Web3 type things and blockchain type things that people are um, very passionate about, uh, we really are, are trying to avoid building technologies into Valid that require a, some kind of financial investment or a coin or any kind of blockchain where things are indelibly etched into a, a data structure on the internet. Um, you know, really trying to build things that have zero barrier to entry for people. So you should be able to just run a valid application and have it be accessible to you. Um, you know, where our target market for these applications are going to be everyone, not just technically or cryptographically savvy people or programmers. Um, we're really trying to build valid as a a means to write applications that can reach everyone. So, you know, building a chat applications that just work, you know, the defaults should just work out of the box. It should work on every kind of network. Um, we have a Discord. I was going to show you the link there. If you go to this, it will redirect you to our community where you can uh, go and chat with all of us. 
Uh, okay, so without further ado, um, why don't I show you a little bit about the Rust side of things, since that's what we're here for. Um, I chose Rust because it does um, a beautiful job of cross-compilation to other platforms, and I knew that WebAssembly was um, going to be something that I wanted to support um, with Valet. So it was about four years ago, and I started talking about how do we improve on the state of peer-to-peer -peer networking. Um, there was a lot of projects out there uh, like Tor, which provided the privacy guarantees that we wanted for people. You shouldn't have to disclose your IP address to everybody on the internet that you talk to. In, in the context of, say, a chat application, uh, you wouldn't want someone sending you a, a chat invitation and then, you know, by proxy of you looking at it or something, being able to figure out where you live or, you know, even where whether you're at work or, or at home. Uh, so IP privacy... You know, is very important to a peer-to-peer -peer network, maybe more so than you know, uh, in centralized applications where that might not be visible to uh, you know people, uh, you know, other clients, but only visible to some central place. Um, so in peer-to-peer -peer systems, you have a, a big privacy requirement, um, but you also have the general problem of distributed services, um, building file storage, for example, or key value stores. Um, that's uh, the kind of thing that, that centralized services have solved for a long time. Uh, and you've got cloud services like uh, S3 and whatever that you can just push blobs into and then you know, pull them down. So the, you know, there's, there's a number of challenges in the, in the peer to peer space that need to be made simple. Um, and there are technologies like IPFS and uh, some of these other peer to peer systems that have solved some of those distributed storage problems. Um, albeit maybe slowly and uh, they have some issues with things like you know people hogging bandwidth and needing file coin and other things uh, you know to help incent people to store things online um, and there's some IP privacy issues with IPFS because they do not employ any kind of uh, IP privacy basically if you put a node online you know you're, you're handing over your IP address to whoever decides to store things on your node um, so to, to basically take a lot of the good ideas that were out there and put them all in one place and make it accessible, um, we built this Valid Core. Um, and Valid Core is a crate uh, that provides all of the sort of low-level networking primitives and private routing capabilities and a distributed hash table with some interesting um, data structure capabilities that a lot of other DHTs uh, do not have. Um, so uh, the network manager uh, is our sort of lowest level, and that has implementations for native code and for WebAssembly because they're very different. Um, you know, we support communication in an unsequenced form over UDP as well as sequenced form over TCP. But when you're in a browser, for example, you have to use something like WebSockets. And WebSockets, while it's over TCP, is have got very different semantics and um, you know, uh, the way you actually, you know, instantiate a WebSocket is different. So, um, you know, we support WebSockets and secure WebSockets. And all of the different nodes can support some subset of those things. Um, so uh, abstracting that away uh, into uh, unsequenced and connection-oriented sequenced protocols uh, is sort of this network manager's job. Um, now, the first thing that happens when you launch a uh, a valid node, any valid node, is that it has to find other valid nodes. Um, so uh, this is the one piece that is a tiny bit centralized, and that is because we use DNS to use a text record. And it will do a bootstrap text record lookup to find a set of nodes that exist. And they don't have to be special. There's nothing special about bootstrap nodes. Uh, they don't, they all just run the same valid core as everyone else, uh, but they don't uh, you know, have any kind of um, special signaturing or blessing from some kind of valid organization. We do have a, uh, a U.S. nonprofit that is a steering committee for uh, for valid, but um, it doesn't have any kind of special control over the valid network. Um, you know, we do have the DNS entries for the Bootstrap, and that's it. Um, so hey, make the DNS text record to bootstrap.vela.com. It pulls down or bootstrap.vela.net. It pulls down the, the just a few public keys uh, and some IP addresses to go look and 
Uh, any node can be a bootstrap, actually, um, but the default ones will just pull uh, a bit of routing table um, from a few nodes that are kind of guaranteed to be up. Um, and after it's done that for the first time, those are saved locally in a routing table. And those routes uh, and the, the, the existence of those nodes is cached. Um, and it's going to end up caching. It's going to ask those nodes, hey, what other nodes do you see uh, that are near my own node in hash space? Uh, what does that mean? Well, every node has a 256-bit identifier. Um, our hash space is 256 bits wide. Um, and we have a cryptography suite that we've blessed for all nodes to use. Um, and each node's uh, node ID is a public key in that space. Um, so everything is authenticated automatically and encrypted between nodes. So there is no uh, uh, unencrypted communications going on on the network. Um, so if one node talks directly to another, it is encrypted with a Diffie-Hellman exchange of those two node IDs, public keys. Uh, so everything that goes between two nodes is encrypted um, and then also signed as a result. So you can't just forge communications from one node to another. Uh, you also can't forge a node's um, peer info, uh, which is it's, uh, you know, how is it reached across the internet? Um, so let me give you a, a sense for what all of that looks like. Um, so you have a network manager that, that handles the connections. We have a cryptography suite we call VLD0, which is sort of a blessed set of different protocols. Um, uh, you have Blake 3 Digest that we use and uh, ED25519 and X25519 for DH. So there's a bunch of cryptography choices that we've made that we kind of bless into this VLD0 crypto system. Um, and then we have a routing table that keeps track of all of the different peers and, you know, routing table is probably going to grow to be about 200 other nodes beyond your own node. Um, but it also manages what we call private routing. Um, we have a, uh, a selection mechanism that goes through and measures the performance of every node that it sees and keeps statistics on those nodes. So in the background, Vail, it is, uh, checking to see how reliable other nodes are and over what protocols. It can handle IPv4 as well as IPv6, and we'll do testing uh, in sort of low bandwidth, low um, overhead. You know, we're talking maybe five or six kilobytes per, sec uh, per, per second tops um, of overall bandwidth use, just sitting in the background, checking the routing table, looking for uh, the reliability of other nodes. Um, so if nodes are shown to be reliable, they can be chosen to participate in private routing. And this is done like Tor, where you have like an onion routing system where you know you pick a few nodes and say, okay, I'm gonna make sure I send through those nodes and pass along an encrypted blob that gets peeled, layers peeled off of it cryptographically at each hop. Um, now, the destination that you wanna to send to also publishes a what we call a private route. So you have these two routes. You have your safety route, which is the thing that you allocate yourself, and the private route, which your destination is allocated and published. And you snap those together to form a combined route, which lets you have a certain number of hops from your source location, which remains private through your safety route, and the destination who is private through its private route. You put those together, then you have a flow that gets created between uh, 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 nodes on, on, on Valid without disclosing the IP address of the nodes. Um, and that is a, sort of a living thing as the network uh, has uh, uh, different you know, quality. You, know, you might have uh, your node might actually be a mobile phone and you go through, uh, you're driving and you go through a tunnel and you lose connectivity, or you switch from Wi-Fi to cellular networks. Uh, Valid transparently handles the reassociation of your node uh, to the Valid network. So if you come and go, uh, maybe you won't be selected to participate in private routes because you don't always uh, show reliability online. So you know it's always sort of trying to judge how capable other nodes are and only asking other nodes to assist when it feels that they will actually be able to do so. So. Uh, keeping that uh, in the back of your mind, you know, Valid is doing a lot in the background to keep the network uh, performing well uh, and to enable services like this private routing. Um, Valid uses a, 
an RPC mechanism that has uh, got a protocol that is based on uh, a funky programming <laughs> RPC programming system called Captain Proto. Um, if you've heard Captain Proto, it's sort of like Protobuf, um, but you can see that we build Rust code from this definition here. And this is the uh, valid on wire protocol, which gets encrypted. Um, but you can see that we use these RPCs, like these operations. Um, and there's three kinds, I'm scrolling down to the bottom of this relatively extensive file. Um, but you can see we have questions. And some of them are simple, like status, which is like our ping, and a find node, which helps you find other nodes that are close to another node in hash space. Um, then we have things like our DHT get value and set value commands and a watch value command, which will tell you when a, a value has changed online. Um, and then calls that can be passed up to the application layer, whoever's hosting Valid. Um, and then you can see uh, statements uh, are things that don't require answers. So it's like a unidirectional RPC. And then we have bidirectional RPC. So you have questions and answers. And these are all um, managed, they have timestamps, they are all signed, um, and they can be sent over both direct between nodes or they can be sent over private routes. Um, so real quick, um, before I go any further into this, there is some uh, sort of user consumable uh, examples that I can show you. Uh, valid server is a valid node that is literally just valid core running as a, uh, as a server side uh, application that it doesn't have any UI per se, um, but if you run this, you can see it. Um, I've already built it, but it takes a little bit. Open this up a little more. Okay, so now I just did a whole bunch of things. I turned on debugging, but uh, <laughs> you can see here that it is uh, got a big old log. It goes through all of your local IP addresses, figures out what your public IP address is, handles all of the NAT and uh, IPv4 uh, network address translation and firewalling and all of that to make your node reachable and accessible. Um, and then you can connect to your node with our CLI, which is an administration console. And you can see here all of these other nodes and their addresses and how they're reached. This one is over UDP, this one's over TCP. You can see their ping times. Um, and it builds a relatively extensive list of all of these other nodes. And these are the ones that I'm able to reach directly right now. Um, I wanna see the routing table buckets. You can see we have um, uh, 8, 23, 16, 5, 9, 4. All of these, so these are uh, spaced by how far away in hash space they are. Um, these are all of the uh, node IDs that we, that we see. And if you want to type help, you can see the kinds of commands that are available. Uh, you can see what our dial info for our own node is. And this is our local network. And then this is the kind of network that we're on. We're on a port restricted NAT. And here are three different ways of reaching me over certain different IPs. And here are the port numbers. Uh, and here's how you'd reach it over WebSockets. Um, and each node gets to publish this dial info to other nodes, and they all talk to each other. Uh, there is an API uh, that, that hides all this stuff uh, from people um, and lets you build real world applications. Uh, I can show you what that might look like. We have bindings for Valid Core through to Python and Flutter uh, through Dart. So you can build real rich uh, both web applications and um, uh, desktop applications. So right here, you can see a Flutter app. Uh, and Flutter is a, sort of a, a cross-platform programming environment uh, that builds all of the different target platforms that we care about. Uh, makes it relatively declarative and easy to make uh, GUI applications. You can see this is valid chat. Uh, this is running a valid node in the background. You can see that same scrolling list of stuff going on in the background there uh, in my log, but to the user, it looks just like this. And I could say, hi, my name is Chris, and I am a he, him, and I hit create. And it's going to go ahead and 
create a new account. Uh, and you can see in the background, it's doing all of these DHT operations. It's actually using valid other valid nodes to store my new account that I just created. Um, and this is like a little chat app. Um, it's got some color schemes. <laughs> it's very simple right now. So pardon the, uh, the simplicity of it all. But um, uh, if I wanted to chat with anyone else, you can create a, a contact invitation, which is sent out of band. Um, I can create an invite. And you would scan this code. Um, and someone else out there that is running Valid Chat could uh, accept that invitation either directly uh, or you could copy and paste it. Um, and I don't have it actually demoable right now. I uh, haven't published this to the App Store yet. Uh, we have uh, an iOS app and an Android app that we're working on publishing very soon. Um, but you'll be able to just uh, accept that invitation and click on it and chat with your friend. Um, now, the thing about this is that it does not require any central servers. You know, there is no the signal uh, server or a Facebook Messenger server that it talks to. You are literally just talking through other servers um, that happen to be valid nodes. Um, so yeah, if, if there's you know a very popular application, let's say valid chat here becomes very popular, um, it will not uh, be the only uh, things that it talks to. So valid chat will not just talk to valid chat nodes. It talks to every other node that exists. So if the one app becomes very popular, all of the other apps that are not very popular will actually all gain strength on the network because they're all running the same valid core. Um, this means every app is helping every other app become, uh, you know, capable online. Uh, they can perform relaying and help each other out. They all can do DHT operations for each other. Um, so it's a very collaborative uh, development system where the apps that you're writing are, are all helping other apps that other people are writing uh, uh, work online. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's got a lot of uh, sort of, uh, you know, um, community ideals built into it. Um, and, I, and I'm pretty proud of the way it's all come together. Um, we have a great community. Um, our Discord has uh, about 3,000 or so uh, people with maybe a couple hundred active at any one time. Um, people are building all kinds of different things with this. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free to hop on our Discord and ask us questions. And uh, you know, there's better documentation available and we're working on a couple books, uh, much like how Rust has the the Rust book and the Rust Anomicon, we are doing a, a book on Valid uh, for API consumers and uh, a Valid internals book uh, to talk about how to contribute to Valid as a project. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I don't know what else to really talk about right now about it. Um, you know, there's, uh, I could talk about the DHT a little, um, but uh, I'd be willing to take questions um, if uh, Rainer would like to forward any, if there are any questions. Harold is asking whether he understood this correctly, that uh, a valid is something like tail scale or head scale, but without VPN technology, but on a kind of application level. So not, ju not just a pure network, but if you want to build an application that does something similar, you can use valid. That is his That's question. Correct. What would you respond? Yeah, it is correct. Um, Valid uh, is is not designed to be, say, a proxy. Um, a lot of people are like, oh, if it's like Tor, can I access websites through it? No. Everything that is built with Valid stays inside the Valid network. I mean, someone some someday will probably write a proxy uh, that uses Valid. That's likely. But um, today, the, the point of it is to connect applications together. So yes, um, you know, Harold's uh, uh, perspective on this is very much the right kind of way of thinking, um, and I, uh, I, 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 I expect that down the line, uh, people will find a myriad ways, many ways of using Valid um, as a general purpose networking proxy or networking tool. Um, but the the focus is, is for building applications that have that kind of uh, um, connectivity in mind. 
Mm -hmm. Do I need to open my firewall in order to participate with file uh, with with Valid, or how do you how do you travel through NATs and things like that? Can okay. you elaborate on that a little bit? Absolutely. Okay. So the answer is no. You don't have to do anything at all. Um, mm -hmm. Valid just works outside of the box in every different kind of network. Um, and when I say every kind of network, I mean it. Um, there's uh, every type of NAT out there. Um, you know, you've got symmetric NATs and carrier grade NAT and full cone NATs and restricted NATs that are both port or address restricted. Um, and then you've got direct IP address access as well. And you've got IPv4 and IPv6. And Valid has to work on all of those configurations without any modifications or configuration. Now, that doesn't mean that you know if you wanted to make a big contribution to the network, um, you wanted to set up a very powerful node to help with um, or a bunch of nodes to help with uh, the DHT. Uh, there are ways to configure your network to make it more capable or more helpful. Um, you know, obviously a direct IP address with no firewall required um, is going to be able to be more useful on on the network to other nodes. Um, but uh, you know, to just be a client to to have your app pop up and, and work, um, it uh, th there there are some technologies out there um, that are in common use uh, for uh, NAT traversal uh, that you may have heard of, um, like STUN and TURN. Uh, when STUN is used to help find your uh, public IP address and to assist with port forwarding. Uh, then there's things like TURN, which are, are relaying um, and uh, you know the ability to uh, make reverse connections through firewalls, uh, through signaling. And then there's other things like UPnP, which help configure your firewalls, um, uh, external ports, uh, and the port forwarding from a, let's say, a home router. Um, Valid uh, does not use those protocols. It does use, use does use UPnP if it's if it's available in your network, but it, we have our own Valid specific dial info and uh, forwarding and relaying system. Uh, that keeps everything in network. You see, because most of the stun and turn servers that those protocols use are run by companies like Google or Facebook or Comcast or AT and T or these other you know network service providers, um, they are provide a, a, a bit of centralization that we're not comfortable with. Um, so every valid node is also capable of helping other valid nodes do things like stun and turn. Um, there's relaying and a public IP address detection that is part of the Valid protocol. It is inspired by Stun in turn, um, but it doesn't actually use that protocol. It uses a Valid specific RPC called Validate Dial Info that does that work. Um, so all of the public address detection, port forwarding, uh, all of that stuff is actually all done within Valid and only by Valid nodes. So it stays completely in network and does not require uh, any kind of external help from outside the Valid network to function. So, mm -hmm. which, which kind of contributors do you uh, do you look for? If we have passionate Rust developers here in the group of our viewers, um, where could they help? Uh, absolutely. Um, if you go check out our GitLab, um, we have uh, a, we take pull requests on mm -hmm. all parts of the system currently. Um, we have a lot of work being done on different uh, bindings to different languages. So if you want to help connect Rust to Java for us or Rust to Python or Rust to Dart, you know, we did just did Dart, but um, you know, there's uh, other languages and platforms that uh, we might want to achieve connectivity with. But then there's also, you know, for those that really want to dig into our routing protocols and offer help us build the next generation of valid services, we have a distributed hash table that is nearly done. We have a few things left to do on it, but we have an up and coming block store um, protocol that we would love to have more uh, conversations about. Uh, we want to build a um, sort of a, a, a different kind of block storage system. Uh, right now, IPFS is sort of based on um, on a coin to some extent in terms of they get it to get people to pin files and to serve files okay. um we're looking at uh, building a sort of proof of sharing system mm -hmm. where instead of you know uh you know paying people to to host files we we allow you to host 
uh, if you host a certain number of megabytes of stuff, you're allowed to publish uh, a, a certain number of megabytes of your own stuff. So basically yeah. sort of a, a more, I don't know, I don't know, say communist way of, of doing <laughs> uh, 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 storage. So, you know, basically a uh, everybody helping everybody else out um, propagating uh, content uh, across the internet. So uh, we're working on building that out. Um, in general, we, we need also plenty of more help with documentation. And uh, it's always a, uh, a challenge trying to get everything out of core developers' heads and into a more consumable fashion. Um, mm -hmm. But documenting the API is better and building more test applications. Um, you know, just using the system and helping us uh, find bugs and crushing them uh, is always kind of where we're at. We are still pre 1.0, so we do occasionally do the API breaking changes. We're at version 0.2.5 today, uh, so still an early project. We've only been published okay. open source for like uh, a couple months now, um, but uh, we're getting we're getting better at uh, interacting with the open source community, and uh, would love to help. Um, you know, people make their own valid applications. So if you have great ideas, bring them to our Discord and let's chat. Christian, thank you very much for speaking with us about this project. Thank you very much for the time you spent on this project because I guess you spent pretty uh, a decent amount of time for this project. Three years of uh, my life, uh, very, very much uh, dedicated oh, to wow. uh, building this. So yeah. That's the spirit of an open source developer. Thank you so much for doing that. <laughs> thank you so much. And uh, thank you so much for being with us today. Christian, have a nice evening. Have a nice day. Greetings from Europe to the US. Thank you for being with us.